Live shopping and breaking has been absolutely exploding in the sports card space. And I've got some new statistics to share with you today about the growth of live shopping and breaking that are going to absolutely amaze you. Today, we are going to break down why that is happening, what the future looks like, and the challenges that are occurring in the space because there are challenges. We've seen scams. We've seen things go wrong. We have seen people object to breaking and and the bad of breaking, the perils of breaking. And we're going to get into all of that today. I'm going to bring in one of the leaders in the space, Eric Shemtov from Whatnot. He's the general manager for collectibles on Whatnot. And he's going to come on. We're going to have a conversation about the growth of the space. But I'm also going to ask him the hard questions. I'm going to ask him about challenges that have happened on Whatnot and what Whatnot does about that, how they respond and how they can prevent that kind of stuff from happening again in the future and i'm going to ask him with the challenges of breaking and with it being such a breaking oriented platform as well as the good as well as the crazy growth and the businesses that have been created on the back of whatnot and where whatnot is going and where live shopping and breaking is going in the future should be a really good conversation so please welcome eric from whatnot to the jeff wilson show This episode is brought to you by Arena Club. Arena Club is an innovative platform featuring grading and authentication, vaulting, and digital pack openings. Be sure to check out the amazing items up for auction right now at Arena Club. From rare cards to top tier collectibles, there's something for you at Arena Club. Download the Arena Club app today by searching Arena Club in the app store on your phone, and then use promo code SCI for 10% off your first purchase of cards at Arena Club. Hey Eric, welcome to the Jeff Wilson Show. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to dig in with you today. I was reading over this state of live streaming report that you guys recently put out, and there are some pretty shocking statistics in here I want the audience to to hear and actually think about, one of which was that there are over 175,000 hours of live streams taking place every week on WhatNot. And viewers on Whatnot are spending an average of 80 minutes a day watching live streams. <laughs> those, are, those are massive numbers. Are, are you surprised by the degree and depth of live stream selling and the popularity of this type of format in the U.S. right now? Yeah, um, I'm super excited about these stats as well. Um, live stream shopping has been obviously on the rise globally. Um, and it felt inevitable that eventually uh, consumers in the US would start to embrace it. Uh, I think we're all familiar with wa- walking into a retail store, getting help, holding products, taking a closer look at them. And so bringing that experience digitally um, has really been exciting for folks. Um, I think when you look at uh, the engagement side and being able to build a connection with community, with folks that are like-minded and passionate about the same things that you are and that sellers are. It really creates a special experience. Um, You touched on some of the heavy hitters, but I think one that I'm really excited about is that the average user makes 12 purchases each week. Um, That's pretty amazing. Uh, And I think it speaks to the level of engagement on the platform. Yeah, it's, it's almost like there is a set of people out there that have gravitated towards this live shopping as their preferred method of buying things. And and in in some cases, maybe their exclusive method of buying things within the sports card world, right? I mean, one thing I noticed, we do, you know, obviously a lot of streaming here on Whatnot for Cards HQ, breaks and, you know, singles uh, on our Cards HQ shop. And one thing that we notice is that we, we see the same customer group you know, all the time, right? Every night, it seems like a lot of these customers, or at least a few times a week, it's the same customers that are coming back and back and back. And, and you know, it, it, it almost forms a little bit of community that kind of takes place between these folks. They get to know each other in the chat and the, the breakers, the live sellers get to know that customer because they've seen them a bunch of times. Um, and are, are you seeing that like there, there are just 
people, customers who are just latching on to this as like their primary way that they want to buy things. And, and, and that's what is just kind of powering that, you know, amazing amount of time that people are spending on the app and the number of purchases they're making, as you just said. Totally. Um, you know, whatnot started, uh, primarily in collectibles communities and we've since branched out into others like fashion and so on, but the that deep interest in the product and then finding folks that care about similar things um i think when you have that type of interaction it draws you to continue to come back um i also think it's worth acknowledging the entertainment factor of using sports breaks as an example like you may not buy in to every break or buy in every night uh, but watching and experiencing a break alongside other folks that are really excited about it um, is a really fun experience and i think it's unmatched anywhere else like uh, for someone that is passionate about this thing, their friends that they grow up with or their local community may not be as excited about these products and experiences as they are. And so going to whatnot and having that community and meeting more people creates a, a really amazing experience. And then the, uh, the offering that you can create as a seller and the loyalty that you can drive by putting on a great experience and shipping your cards quickly and the personality that you are and the engagement that you can drive helps to further that. Yeah. And I, I want to talk a little bit more about breaking as we go. Some people are very critical of breaking and, and I want to talk more about that, but I, I will say one of my personal experiences that kind of dovetails into what you're talking about is the ability to call up a stream and I, I'll sometimes actually like simulcast it up on my TV in my living room and the ability on like a new release day, for example, for a product that you have interest in it that you're excited about, the ability to just call up a stream and just watch the cards being open for people. It's cool entertainment. Even if you don't buy in, yep. I, I've always seen breaking actually as a inexpensive form of entertainment because you could you could literally throw it up on the TV screen and watch it and not buy in, or you can buy in and get us get a spot or two, often for thirty bucks or fifty bucks or something like that. Now I think some of the criticism around breaking comes around people who go real hard at it and they're constantly buying in and thousands of dollars and all that kind of stuff. But you certainly don't have to do that to enjoy it. You can just sit back, put it up, maybe buy a spot, maybe not buy a spot, and just watch. And I imagine that that there is a lot of that that probably goes on on your app, and I imagine that's probably why the average person is spending 80 minutes a day on there, which is a, a wild number, but it, I think it speaks to that entertainment factor. 100%. Um, and I think you know if you are watching a game, if you're watching Thursday Night Football, you're likely texting your friends about what is happening, right? And so similarly, when you hop on whatnot and you're engaging in these streams and you're chatting with folks and you're engaging with the breaker, uh, it's a fun experience and it doesn't require you buying in. Uh, I do think that release days are a really fun example where uh, people used to post up on forums or wait for cardboard connection to release like, hey, what are the big hits in the product and what do they look like? Um, and now you can watch and experience that, all of that live uh, and interact with other folks that really care about it. And so I think that's a, a fun experience. Um, and I think that seeing these products as they come to market without needing to go to you know, a Dallas card show or get on a plane and travel or otherwise uh, is something that's really special. You had mentioned, Eric, uh, in one of your earlier answers about live streaming, you, use, you said globally, you made reference to this being kind of a worldwide thing. I first uh, kind of came to know live streaming by seeing some news stories about like the explosive growth of it in, in Asia, in India, specifically live stream selling, I should say, not just live streaming, but like, you know, buying things mm -hmm. on a live stream, right? Um, I think, uh, yeah, India, Asia are real, real hotbeds for it. I mean, there's some crazy stats if you look up like, you know, what live streaming's done in China and live stream selling in some other countries like that. Um, how much does whatnot take kind of cues from what's happening globally or, or is the U S market just different? So you're kind of approaching it in its own manner. Yeah. Um, we're obviously aware of the trends and looking, uh, at 
what is happening overseas, but we're really focused on what will resonate specifically with our community, um, primarily in the US, but whatnot is also uh, in the UK and Europe. Um, the I think that these markets expect a bit of a different experience um, and really uh, tailoring whatnot to what folks are looking for, what will be most engaging to them um, and building around uh, their interests is what's really important. And so uh, while we're aware of it, um, I think that a lot of what we're doing on the engagement side and uh, building of trust uh, in communities, thinking about, hey, what categories are most relevant? So I touched on earlier, uh, you know, we started really in collectibles, communities, sports cards was uh, the third category on whatnot following Funko Pops and Pokemon cards. Um, but we've since expanded to many, many more. And so as we think about what are consumers looking for, what types of products are well suited to be sold in a live streaming experience, um, and then how we build our product around it is, is what's mo most important to us. Give me a sense of how big sports cards are on whatnot and, and compare, like you mentioned, you guys are now in a ton of different categories. Like how, how does sports cards compare to TCG or Funko pops or, or, you know, the multitude of other things you guys are doing on the platform? Sure. Um, trading cards as a whole is huge. Um, and sports is uh, a good chunk of that. Um, you know, one of the, one of the key stats that, uh, got picked up in a lot of places in our live streaming report was that, um, whatnot sellers have achieved a combined $2 billion in sales, uh, in 2024 alone. Um, and so you could imagine how much of that is coming from sports cards, from our TCG categories of Pokemon and magic, the gathering and so on. Um, and so we're really, really excited about that. Uh, I think when we look at the growth, uh, of the category, it's come, um, a large part of it has come through breaking. Um, we do have a large singles business as well. Uh, I know you guys at Cards HQ are, are leaning into all these things, including the TCG side. Uh, and so it's been really amazing to see. And I think that uh, having been at Whatnot and been working on this category for nearly four years now, um, it's truly been astonishing to see the growth, not just of the business, but of the sellers that drive the business every day. And so some of those folks sure are household names, um, but some of them were not names that people knew in the hobby prior to whatnot. And so that's something that uh, I continue to be really excited about and I'm really passionate about in helping more people unlock businesses from the things that they're most passionate about. $2 billion is a big boy number. Um, I remember at the height of the sports card boom in 2021, eBay came out with a report saying that they, I believe they were touting that they had done $2 billion, you know, worth of kind of total sales across their entire platform. That that's a, that's a, a, a big number for you guys to be doing, uh, especially at this stage of your growth. Can it, can it get a lot bigger? Like wh where do you think if you guys are doing 2 billion today across the platform, um, what's the, what is the growth potential of this? Yeah. I mean, I always say, I think it's really hard to imagine a category where live shopping doesn't add significant value. Um, and so I think that means that there is significantly more upside and opportunity for whatnot. And then the sellers that come to the platform. Similarly, we talked a little bit about community, but one of the more exciting things I've seen and, and learned is, and it may seem obvious, but there is community around everything you could imagine. And so we're talking primarily about sports cards today, but uh, a growing category on whatnot is plants and home and garden. <laughs> okay. um, and there are collectible and rare plants that people are growing and cultivating and showcasing, and there's strong community around it. Um, and so I do think there is significantly more opportunity when we look at the trading card side of things. We have a card sold every second on whatnot. Um, and I still think there's room for exponential growth there, um, whether it's on the breaking side or single side. Um, there are tons of passionate and excited people that are traveling to card shows and looking to trade and sell and acquire new cards and open more packs and chase you know the next big player. And so I think when you combine 
uh, a lot of these things together, it just presents a significant opportunity both for whatnot and for the folks that are selling on the platform. All right. Well, when when they start coming out with the uh, Venus flytrap, red refractor, serial number to five, I'm going to go over to the plants channel. But until then, I'm sticking with sports cards. I never would have guessed that plants, by the way, had a big community following on whatnot. I, but I, I'm going to have to check that out now. That's funny. Um, I One thing that I think is interesting looking at this space over the last few years, you guys, you guys first of all, have competition, right? And anybody who uh, sees two billion dollars in a year of transactions that is going to be that that is you know you're waving the flag saying you know come compete with us right because there's so much money potential in this uh live streaming selling industry uh live shopping industry right and and you've had some big competition and most notably uh fanatics came on a couple of years ago with fanatics live and i think that there were a lot of people in the industry myself included that thought that Fanatics with Fanatics Live was going to have kind of an immediate significant impact, that they were going to take a lot of market share, that it was going to become this big war between you guys and, and maybe Fanatics Live would, because, because they're, you know, they own tops and manufacturing, maybe they were going to kind of, you know, come out of this victorious. It has seemed to me, though, uh, that ever since Fanatics Live has launched, you guys have just continued to grow and it, it 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 feels to me like it's almost hardly stymied your growth at all. Like you guys are just bigger now than ever before. How have you been able to navigate that, navigate the competitive pressures and, and kind of stay as dominant as you have been in this space? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the, the number one thing is being primarily focused on delivering value for both buyers and sellers on the platform and doing so in a way that builds trust with the community. Um, and there are aspects of that that um, are our product experience and how we're always thinking about what new product features can we roll out to keep folks engaged and exciting and allow sellers to continue to grow their businesses while making it uh, a fun and exciting experience that people want to spend as much time as they are on the platform. Um, and I think that's been our key focus and will continue to be is how do we maintain that? Um, how do we build connection and foster community here? Um, and it translates, like we see that in the growth of the business um, and people continue to be excited about what is happening on Whatnot. Uh, I think the, the other piece I would add is um, because Whatnot is across categories, we're always thinking about and learning from what we see elsewhere. And so um, when it comes to the product experience, we recently launched a new product feature called Rewards Club. Um, it drives loyalty, not just to whatnot, but to the individual seller. Um, and so for you, Jeff, like people love to see you when you're live um, and you're able to build and continue the, that loyalty uh, and reward folks for coming back each day. And so I do think it's an example from our product experience where we're always thinking about um, you as the seller and then the buyer and how do we really create an amazing experience for, for each side of the marketplace. I know there are some sellers that are cross-platform, right? So they may, you know, card shops, for example, they may be live on multiple platforms, you know, potentially even in the same day doing selling. Are you guys seeing, do you like stay in touch with that? Like how, how, do, how do sellers do on your platform compared to other platforms they're on? And is that kind of a measure of success for you guys? Yeah, um, I think it's natural. I think what we see is that people sell across marketplaces um, and uh, that's not just in sports cards. Um, what we see uh, in our sports card sellers is that um, folks are selling twice as much uh, here compared to other platforms that they're streaming on. I think that speaks to the strength of the community um, and the the community that we've built of buyers and viewers, right? Like we've talked a bit about this of how people continue to come back. Um, they, we drive that loyalty from buyer to seller. Um, and again, like that translates into success for sellers where they continue coming back, they're inventing, you know, new formats, new ways to engage users. And then when you pair that with the product experience that we're creating. Um, again, it allows everyone to grow. Were you worried when 
some of these competitors like first emerge. I, you've been you've been doing this for a while, right? You've been, I think, four years with whatnot. Yeah, um, it's been just about four years, uh, and I think you know won't comment specifically on any competition, but it's something that has been consistent over time in the business. Like we talked about how big of an opportunity is. Um, we talked about the two billion dollars in GMV or transactions this year alone, and. As you mentioned, that is going to attract folks that are interested in getting a piece of that. And so it is expected, but um, as we always have, we uh, were ruthlessly focused on the experience that we're creating. Uh, it's hard to, some, hard to do something really, really well uh, if you're not super focused. Um, and so, yeah, continue to be excited about what we're doing and the opportunity here. Um, and we've, we've barely scratched the surface. You mentioned earlier entrepreneurship and kind of uh, getting excited when you see, you know, new sellers or small businesses kind of have success on the platform. I'm curious how much you you see of that. Like, obviously, the uh, you see a lot of headlines of like the the big streamers on whatnot who are doing the giant breaks or they have a thousand people in their show or, you know, big, big card shops, big companies, big breakers, everything like that. But, but you guys, whatnot's pretty deep in terms of its roster of who sells on whatnot. And at, at any moment in time, there's, I, I, I don't know how many sellers are live, but I know there's a lot of sellers live and some are small and they're selling, you know, $5 cards and they may have eight people watching their stream and they're doing great. And that's what, you know, that's kind of how they're getting started with things and they're happy with it. How much of that kind of smaller business, single entrepreneur, maybe even side hustle type of business takes place on whatnot compared to kind of what the big boys do? Totally. Um, I do think whatnot is a launch pad for all types of sellers, as you shared, whether uh, it's someone that's pursuing a side hustle trying to offload some of their cards that they've built up a collection of um, or build a full-time business. Similarly, um, there are hobby shops, there are enterprise level breakers, uh, whatnot is accessible to all of these folks. And part of the, the value is it's a way to reach a broad audience um, and engage with folks that are equally passionate uh, about the same collectibles that you are. Um, we, do, we did share a stat that uh, more than one in 10 sellers are now full-time on the platform. I think that's pretty amazing. Uh, I don't think all of those folks came to whatnot as a full-time business, um, but they've grown over time. They've built a following, they've built a community that has allowed them to potentially quit, you know, a, a nine to five job doing something else. Um, and we have stories like up and down the board of folks that have built massive businesses on whatnot. Um, there are, uh, some that are really exciting, like folks that have refound their love for sports cards um, and, you know, unloaded a collection uh, and then now are running a full time business. And so it is critically important to us that uh, sellers of all sizes and scales um, and different backgrounds are able to find success on the platform. Um, and the most exciting for me is when someone is able to build that into a full time business around their passion. Now, one of the challenges that comes with having a lot of sellers, including a lot of smaller sellers on the platform, is that you then have the possibility of, you know, some of those sellers being bad apples, right? Maybe not, maybe not doing things the right way. Um, and that obviously has happened from time to time. There have definitely been, you know, big headlines and, and you know, stories shared around the sports card hobby of sellers on whatnot doing something mischievous, doing something bad, you know, whether it's a breaker or some other type of seller and, you know, customers end up getting taken advantage of as a result. When those types of situations occur, what happens at whatnot? Like how does whatnot respond in those types of manners? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, and these things aren't new. Um, they're not new at whatnot um, and they're not new to whatnot. Like they've always existed in communities. Um, and so there are scammer trackers and so on that predate us. Uh, and so what we've done and a part, key part of our mission is to create 
a safe and trustworthy experience. Um, and we have to address these problems head on um, and ideally provide as much, as much transparency as we can around them when they happen. And so I think your question is specifically like what happens internally um, when we uncover these, but it is like an all hands on deck moment from the crew that's supporting it, which is everyone from product to policy to trust and safety to myself and folks on my team, um, there are a handful of things that we do to try to catch these. And so there's proactive and reactive, of course. And so um, we do have uh, elements and signals in our product that alert us to when something is not kosher or not right, like a break being canceled early. Um, there's also, of course, the reactive, which is some of what you're alluding to. Of, you know, someone posts and says, hey, uh, I didn't get this card or otherwise. And those things are critical. Like we want to hear about them when they happen um, because we are also members like of this community, right? And so if I buy into a break, I, I know what it's like to not receive my card. And I also know that I want that card over just being reimbursed the market value of it, right? And so our policy is actually built around that where if you don't receive a card from a break, we do our best to get you that card. If it's a one of one, uh, we have to work with the seller to try to get our hands on it. If not, we'll go to the market to try to procure it and get it for you. And in the worst case, we will reimburse you the full market value, even if it's above the price uh, that you bought into a break at. Um, that is a first of its kind policy. And we design that specifically for sports cards, because again, we know what that experience is like as a consumer. And we wanna make sure that you know, whatnot is the place to take part in this type of experience um, and that we're protecting you as a consumer. And so uh, we, on the other side of that, uh, we do have a, a strict enforcement matrix, which is basically um, how we adjudicate over these things when they happen, what actions come down on a seller. Um, those include suspensions or lifetime bans. Um, and all of that is with the intent of driving a safe and trustworthy experience for folks. Um, because that is what we would want to be a part of and take part in ourselves. Is there anything that you can really do, though, to prevent it? I mean, a lot of this sounds like this is what happens, you know, kind of after the fact, right? Like if something bad were to happen. I know you are onboarding a lot of sellers onto your platform. You got a lot of sellers on there, so it's difficult. And this, this is the same challenge that any type of marketplace has where, you know, if you you if you want to allow a lot of sellers on the marketplace, then it's difficult to ensure the integrity of every single one of those sellers. But is there is there anything that you either currently do or kind of are planning on doing in the future to help um, help maybe prevent some of this from happening to begin with? Of course. Um, in the onboarding experience, there are things like identity verification, adding of a credit card and so on to dissuade folks that could want to do something like this or take advantage of the community. Um, and we're always adding more signals through our trust and safety product to understand if there's if something is awry. Um, and I think that's generally our approach to challenges like this, where whether it's the product experience, the policies that we have in place, um, how we enforce these things, we're always iterating and adapting to make sure that we're driving an experience that folks really want to be a part of and, and have trust in. Uh, and so again, like going back to the period of time, like having been here for four years, a lot of that has changed over time for the better um, because we have gotten smarter. We've experienced more things. We've seen more. And by way of that, we're able to hold folks accountable, uh, reinvent our policies and our uh, standard operating procedures around when these things happen, what does that look like uh, to ensure that we continue to create a great experience. While we're on the topic of things that can you know, be challenging sometimes, I want to talk about breaking. Um, obviously, breaking is a big part of WhatNot's platform. We, we break here at Cards HQ. In fact, we've got two different breaking channels on WhatNot, Cards HQ Breaks and Cards HQ Alley, uh, where we do breaking mm -hmm. um, several nights a week on both. But Breaking is considered to be a controversial word in the hobby by some, by many perhaps. You know, you hear 
people say that they think, you know, people can get kind of addicted to braking or braking is responsible for driving up box prices. You know, that's uh, that's one thing that we hear a lot is like, you know, people who are trying to buy the individual boxes feel like because of braking, box prices get more expensive in general because break, you know, braking buys it all up. At the same time, it seems like directionally that braking continues to grow and, and be a focus within the sports card hobby. I mean, even the manufacturers very much actively encourage braking and seem to have braking on their, you know, radar and roadmap as kind of a, a growth area and an entry point for new collectors to come into the hobby. I'm curious if at whatnot, if you guys ever kind of put any thought or consideration into some of the challenges or perils perhaps with braking, or do you feel like, hey, this is this is part of the hobby and you know we're gonna support it and it, maybe it's not your role to decide is this, you know, kind of a positive thing or or maybe not a positive thing for the hobby overall. Definitely. Um I do think braking has introduced new dynamics to the hobby and I think having seen it over a period of time, it has definitely evolved and grown. Um, I think we also all acknowledge that it plays a pretty critical role in the hobby um, of um, making cards accessible to everyone. Like that's why we are all here. Like every sought after card and base card starts in a pack and in a box and it has to be opened or ripped. And I do think that breaking makes it more accessible for folks. We talked a bit about, um, you know, how, uh, folks gather around like as community members and take part in this thing that is rooted in where we all started, which is our LCS, right? Where you walked into a shop, you opened a pack of cards. uh, You likely did that with, you know, the shop owner or the person working the register did it together. And so it's something that has always existed. And without it, many of the most exciting cards wouldn't come to market. And so it does feel like a pretty critical piece of the ecosystem. Um, it also makes access more affordable for folks. Um, a lot of people don't want to open up an entire box. Maybe they can't afford to. And so getting a slice of it through this, um, this type of format does feel like it's valuable and adds value. Um, and I think as we see more products come to market and different price, price points uh, and so on, it does open up that accessibility to folks. It's it's always been my viewpoint, and I've shared this with my audience many times, that I think breaking is entertainment, right? And I think that people should approach breaks as entertainment, and the expense of buying into a break is an entertainment expense. For people who actually want to invest or flip or you know have some financial return or financial stakes in cards... I, I favor buying singles and, you know, most of my activity is around buying singles, but I still do buy into breaks for entertainment value. Right. Uh, but when I'm investing significant money, I'm, I'm tend to buy singles. That's my, you know, approach to the, to the hobby. Um, I'm curious. I know on whatnot, you have both breaking and single selling. We do both here at Cards HQ. I'm curious how the single selling, how important is the single selling business to whatnot? How how big of a mix is that for you guys on the sports side compared to breaking? Yeah, um, as we chatted about, breaking is a core part of the sports community on whatnot and more broadly. Um, we talked a bit about the why behind that. Uh, the singles market is thriving. Um, I know you guys partake in it in one of your accounts, as do many others. And I really compare it more, it's more like the experience of being at a card show, right? Like you walk around to different tables, you're looking for things that you're interested in, you're talking to dealers and hearing more about the cards. And so uh, I think there's a lot of value that Whatnot adds when it comes to transacting around singles. Uh, and it's it's really fun. Uh, there's that immediate gratification. Um, there's the browse experience where you're just poking around in different shows trying to find something you're excited about except you're not logging steps on your step counter you can be sitting on your couch um, and seeing a variety of products and so i continue to be really excited about the singles market on whatnot whether it's raw cards or graded cards 
there's a pretty amazing uh, assortment of products and it does very much give you that card show feel on your phone. And speaking of card show, I know you organize a couple of times a year, you organize the whatnot card show, which I assume is being organized to try to promote and push single sales on whatnot, you know, even more. Um, it's actually the, the newest iteration of it actually starts tomorrow, uh, Thursday and, uh, goes through Sunday. Uh, I know we here at Cards HQ are, are part of it. In fact, I'm going live tomorrow night on the Cards HQ shop account to do a LeBron uh, single sale. And then Saturday night, I'm going live to do Jordan, Michael Jordan cards. And we're also going live on Sunday to do different sales as well. Um, is what What is the strategy with this card show? Why why did Whatnot kind of introduce this? And, and why are you guys continuing to kind of push this as an event as heavily as, as you have now been doing? Yeah. Um I mean, just like everyone else in the hobby, we love card shows. Um, we support and go to many of them. Um, I'm sure folks saw our presence at the National this year as an example. Um, but one of the things we're really excited about about Whatnot Card Show is that it gives us the ability to uh, support and give access to many more folks than maybe would be able to show up at a show. And so um, some of the biggest shows in the world support you know, around six, 700 dealers. Um, we're welcoming 10X the number. Um, so we have over 7,000 sellers that are participating in the show. Um, there's virtually zero cost. You don't have to travel. Um, and so opening up that access to uh, a really wide audience of folks that are excited about these products is a pretty amazing uh, experience. Um, and again, you get all of that from your couch. And so this is the fifth iteration of the show that we've done. Um, we're always thinking about how do we change the game? How do we continue to excite folks? Uh, this week it runs from November 7th to the 10th. Um, there are over a million and a half cards for sale, uh, over $100,000 in giveaways across a couple of days. Uh, really excited about what you guys have planned. And I think it's a great example of um, giving sellers an opportunity to create a differentiated and unique experience to maybe what they're typically doing on the platform. Um, one, one example I'm excited about is Gary Vee is going to be a part of the show. Um, he's selling some of his sports cards. He's doing some V friends as well. Um, and that feels like something that you would see at an in real life card show. And so making that something that anyone could easily tap into without any travel is that's really special and uh, really excited about about the weekend and also the programming that you guys have planned. We're certainly excited to be part of it. And uh, normally when we do those kind of special events, uh, they turn into we get a lot of audience in there. You know, we'll have hundreds and hundreds of people watching live and, you know, bidding on cards and and participating in the giveaways and everything like that. So it's it's always a fun event. Um, the as you look to the future. I uh, and you look towards you know whatnot kind of continuing to grow. Is the emphasis on doing more events like that? Is the emphasis on innovating the features within the app? Where, where do you see kind of the the you know the future going here with whatnot and making the experience you know for consumers better? Good question. Uh, it's definitely both. Um, and so I'll start with the latter. Uh, that you shared, which is the product experience. Like at the end of the day, um, we're a technology company. Um, we have a massive product and engineering team uh, and we're investing heavily there. Uh, and I touched on this earlier, but we're always thinking about how do we keep folks engaged and then how do we provide you as a seller tooling to allow you to continue to grow and better engage your audience. Um, and so that can be things like our uh, the rewards club program that I touched on. Uh, we're building, or actively building and rolling out a breaking feature in the product, uh, and always thinking about uh, how do we set the new standard and keep folks really excited about what's happening on the platform. Similarly, I do think Whatnot Card Show is a great example of something that's pretty unique to Whatnot digitally, of course, um, and that's something that we run a couple of times a year but there are many more concepts um, and many more ways that we can engage the community, many more ways to activate folks like 
Cards HQ to create differentiated and unique content um, and essentially eventize these things. And so we see a lot of these events uh, in person. Um, they all have a unique spin on them. Um, and how, how do we create that experience on whatnot and do it as consistently as we can? I think those are two great ways. Uh, the last one I would mention is uh, around product categories. And so outside of cards, um, what else are people excited about? Um, and then there's an education opportunity of helping people understand, well, why are people so excited about sports cards? And maybe I should be a part of this. And so I spent a chunk of my career in sneakers and sneaker marketplaces. Um, and there's a lot of crossover and interest. I see a lot of similar faces. And so as we continue to grow, we're, grow we're also growing each of these communities, uh, which is something that I continue to be excited about. Interesting stuff. When's the uh, first whatnot plant show going to be? Um, there probably already has been one. It may not uh, have been the same scale of a whatnot card show, um, but we are running uh, events like we just did one um, in parallel with New York Comic Con on the collectible side uh, called Beyond the Con. And so we are doing these around the categories and there will be a whatnot card show equivalent uh, in plants soon. All right. Well, well I, hopefully there's not going to be a whatnot handbag show or if there is, please, uh, I don't don't let my wife know. I, I'll delete the app for the weekend and we'll we'll redownload it once that thing's over. If that if that happens, it it already exists, but I, I won't tell anyone. <laughs> Good. Don't tell her. I hope she doesn't watch the interview. All right, Eric. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, certainly. I'm looking forward to the whatnot card show and we're going to get geared up here at Cards HQ to go live uh, Thursday night. Saturday night, Sunday night. It's going to be going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully you guys uh, surpass all your sales goals here uh, over the next few days. Awesome, Jeff. I appreciate it. And thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on. And I just want to remind everybody out there listening that the full length episodes of these Jeff Wilson shows are available, not just on YouTube under the Jeff Wilson show channel on YouTube, but also shop uh, Spotify and Apple podcasts. So make sure you are subscribed everywhere so you can listen to these shows on the go. Thanks for watching and we'll see you with the next one. Take care.